Hello everybody, and welcome back for chapter 10, the last chapter, the X Muscle System course. I cannot believe we're already here. Um, no, it's pretty wild. I hope that it's been a good course as of yet. And now the last thing I want to go over, and it'll be similar to the female chapter, where I'm not rebuilding anything or, you know, because a lot of the principles, once again, are the same. I just want to go over a couple of key differences to keep in mind when it comes to, particularly for this, it being horizontal as compared to vertical, like the human, which you'll have some differences to keep in mind, once again. Um, another thing is like muscles that go over and have a couple different attachment points and the ways that I kind of rectify that. Um, which once again, it'll be similar to like how the main torso on the male had multiple attachments with pins to different varying bones. This has a similar thing, right? Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that this also has, because it's a predator, uh, it has loose skin, right? Whereas let's say a chimpanzee, same with us, it's tight to us. It's like a shrink wrap. Um, and so I add a little bit of dynamic movement to that skin just to kind of give that that look where it's interacting with the muscles underneath. And it just gives it such more, a higher fidelity on a model like this. And now I just also want to give a shout out to uh, Visual Effects Grace. I think they make the absolute best animal blender creations like, you know, out there. I think they're like Hollywood level. They look incredible. Uh, so it's awesome to be able to use this. Um, okay, so a couple, once again, I want to just start with, uh, let me start with this here. So something to keep in mind is that what I did is I actually, I ended up adding, and once again, I created this prior to being able to use the pins as, as they were introduced before, like before, like how I showed you in the mail video. Uh, I went about this in a bit of a different way. Actually, why don't I do as I've done in other ones too, where I'm going to isolate. So you see, okay, I got my left pin, my right pin, kind of the torso center. Then I have the back of the torso. Uh, and I kind of have that pinned down. This just underneath. That muscle is really of no consequence, but I just kept it. Showing the torso front. And this one, once again, I have a lot more pins. And this one's pinned so that it moves just a little bit dynamically with the shoulder. So this one has a lot of pin action on it. And for that portion, that's pretty well it for what I wanted to show you for just, you know, um, for me, with all the parts that it dynamically, once again, has interactions with, I am having pins to kind of create that interaction. So it's a little bit more intensive on and a lot of a lot more fine tweet uh, tuning to get it to work with certain muscles uh, in unison. Okay, so if I go back, unisolate. Another thing I will show you as well is that I do the clusters like I have before, right? You just kind of pick the clusters you think will make the most sense. And will be connected to similar bones too. So that one, one big cluster. Okay, this is another one I wanted to show you where same thing, right? I have multiple pin groups. So up here, that's just the uh, one of the pins is just for that area on there to be attached to the arm pretty much, right? And then if I go up, we have the shin pin, sorry, down. Shin pin going into there for the front of the shin. The neck pin. The head pin. And apparently I have a head pin too, just probably connecting it here to that muscle. Um, and then pice up again. I have a lot of pins on this one to really kind of snap because it has multiple interaction points. Um, that's a bit of the, and once again, to create that dynamic movement. Uh, this obviously this muscle looks a little contorted a little bit odd but a part of that is that i'm not seeing that because of how the the skin is and let me show you what i mean so it never interacts and it still moves dynamically and, and close enough right but obviously you can see there's little ridges and stuff but it's still quite good okay and now 
I do want to show you the body. Where if I go and I remove the muscle, if we look, and even while it's going there, so this one, one of the differences that I made is I went through and I did create a claw simulation and I put it right above the corrective smooth because I wanted that corrective smooth to work on it. And now what I want to show you is when I go in and I look at the white paint map, I got skin. Um, I obviously made multiple copies, the skin simulation. So if I go to white paint, this is what I had. So I wanted the most movement down here. Under that patch of skin, I want a little bit of dynamic movement there. Same with here. And same with the front. And I was very picky on where I wanted movement. Technically, I could have had more on the neck, but because he has a big mane, it wouldn't have made sense to, to waste the, the computer hardware, right? And, and just to render that out for no benefit. Okay, so that's what I had done for the weight paint map. Now, if I go into the actual, sorry, the cloth simulation settings, this is what worked for me. My vertex max, uh, my vertex mass, 0.15. Now, if you could take a look at these settings, 5, 5, 5, 0.05, damping, 0 except for the 0.5 down here on bending, internal springs, nothing. Uh, a unique thing I did do was the pressure. And now I believe this acts almost like if there's like a, almost like there's something in it, like there's a density within the actual simulation, because I want it to feel like there's almost like fluid, like there's, there's, you know, there's, there's flesh underneath, right? So I had that pressure to one, one down here, and then a full one as well. I didn't add any vertex group. The shape, make sure you put in your weight paint map. Stiffness, I put the one. It's a dynamic mesh for mine, which means that I do have, uh, well, it just takes into account the, well, I forget particularly what it is, but I believe it takes into account the fact that it's moving. Okay, my collisions, object collisions, 0 0.001. Quality steps are two. I just kept off the self collision because it pretty well, with a rig like this, it's not really gonna happen a lot. So it wasn't applicable. And once again, just trying to save uh, time. Okay, so those are some of the settings that were on this, but also one of the last things I wanted to show you was that for my muscles, I did have on collision, right? Because you want to have that on so that when the skin stimulation is occurring, it's taking into account the muscles underneath and you're seeing some of that. So an important thing to keep in mind is obviously the thickness outer, thickness in, right? Everything else, I believe I kept the same and I did this for a couple of different muscles. Didn't do it for that one. Just the ones that are going to be in direct contact, right? Okay, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this uh, entire Blender Muscle Simulation series for X Muscle System. I hope that it's been a benefit. It's been linear. It's made sense. Um, and, you know, even with this, just the key differences, once again, mostly just being the difference with the, the skin cloth simulation, right? A lot of the other principles do carry over. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'd love to love, love, love to see what you guys create yourselves after going through and getting some of the tools that uh, have gone, you know, we've gone through in each chapter. Okay, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later.